God is love, but they treat me like shit. I don't want that God. And if he's real, why does he allow bad things to happen? Or if he's good, why do kittens get bombed in Syria 24 seven? And most of you guys don't experience God because you're so occupied and busy and there's so much noise that when God speaks, you don't listen because you're not aware. Spirituality, as you become more prominent in this fleeting world, you will have the temptation to become prideful. You will have the temptation to become arrogant, self-conceited, thinking that you've achieved what you've achieved by yourself. There's a reason why the poor people worship God more than the rich people. And it doesn't have to do with because the rich people are better or whatever. It has to do with they, 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 they're they checked, right? At all times, they're checked by the system or they're checked by life that, damn, like they're not that great, right? You're not that much. You're worth shit. Because that's the reality. We're all, we're all dust. We're not worth anything. We're not that, that great. And if you can come with humility, right, into this understanding that you're not hot shit, right? Like humble, humble yourself. Then you can have a relationship with God that is based on being teachable. A lot of people have an interesting relationship with God, and it's a relationship that once again is based off of what they've been told who God is. Right? They haven't experienced God. Why? Because they don't care to experience God. If you want to experience God, you have to be intentional. You can find God in nature. You can find God in books. You can find God in your interactions with other people, but you have to be willing to look for the truth. In order for you to look for the truth, you have to be humble because humility is what gives you the, the, the teachable attitude, the student's attitude in order to develop a spiritual maturity that is abnormal. The second one is you need consistency. Just like in your physical realm, the spiritual realm requires consistency, right? You have to consistently develop the spiritual side of your life in order for it to become strong. When people are like, oh, Luke, how can I become like you? All these things are like, well, what do you mean become like you? Oh, well, you know, you talk this way and you believe these things. I'm like, yes, well, you have to instill a life of discipline. You start adapting these, hobbit, these, these habits and these, this way of life. Um, and then inevitably, it'll just become who you are. I think people need to focus on being consistent. And I think people need to focus on and having a teachable attitude and being humble. And if you don't humble yourself, the world and God will. So about Christianity, I know you, you told me you grew up Christian, but were you like me where you kind of just did it because your parents told you to and like that's what you were around? And was there a point in your life where you started becoming a Christian intentionally and seeking God like yourself? Um, and then after that point, was there a point where you, God spoke to you or you talked to God? Yeah, so, so that's a great question. Yeah, I come from a, a background that has kind of like a Judeo-Christian principle kind of philosophy. And yeah, like like most kids, uh, you just go through the motions because you're just a kid. But then once again, like I mentioned before, I started looking at the results of the lives of the people that were giving me this information, right? So they were telling me who God was, right? But I was looking at their experiences, their marriages, uh, not just my parents, but in general, right? The people around me, the people in the churches, things of this nature. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like, this person says that uh, God is love, but they treat me like shit. I don't want that God, right? And I started questioning everything that I believed, which I believe is extremely healthy and anybody should do because I was comparing it based off of what people were telling me. And people aren't the right measurement, right? You can't hold the standard of God to people because people are always gonna fall short to it. So I realized I need to get to know who God is. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna read the Bible for five years. And the reason I did that was like under the premise that I needed to not be biased towards the world, right? I needed to go on a self-exploration journey. So I went through the crazy exploration of psychedelics. I went through the crazy exploration of uh, Judaism, which is, uh, it's unbelievable. It's, there's so much wisdom, so much knowledge there. It's like phenomenal. Went through the, the Gita, which is the, the Hindu text. I went through the Quran. I went through a lot of texts. Uh, when it's all said and done, whether uh, I ended up agreeing with a lot of the things that, that were mentioned or not, I came to realize that there's a lot of wisdom and a lot of truth and a lot of things that are told. A lot of these people have relationships with, with God, relationships with a higher power, without necessarily having texts or books. So I was like, hmm, can they actually have a personal relationship with God that God speaks to them personally because they're, they're aware, right? They're in tune. Let me test that. Let me test having a relationship with God where he actually speaks to me directly. And most of you guys don't experience God because you're so occupied and busy and there's so much noise, right? Because the brain's like an antenna. There's so much noise. There's God so whispers. Much, so much fuzziness, right? That when God speaks, you don't listen because you're not aware. So it requires this idea of, once, I, once it goes back to what I said in the beginning, you need to have enough to focus on yourself full time because part of focusing on yourself full time is being able to spend time exploring truth, studying truth, dissecting these things that you believe in and coming down to conclusions as to how the world works and who's in charge and what are the governing powers in the world and, and is God real? And if he's real, why does he allow bad things to happen, right? Or if he's good, why why do kids get bombed in Syria 24 seven, right? All these existential questions, they're questions that if you have the ability to spend time focusing on yourself, you're gonna be able to 
have to get to know God more in the process of, of learning. This is a lifelong journey. You know, I think it's like there's a specific book that was written, I think, I forget who the author was, but it's called Pilgrim's Progress. Have you read Pilgrim's Progress? You should read the book Pilgrim's Progress. It's this idea of the Christian's journey, right? He goes through Vanity Fair, goes through different encounters with different entities. And it's a book that basically takes you through the journey of somebody getting to know God. So I'm in that journey of getting to know God and it's a lifelong journey. But like I said, in the beginning, one of the three tenets, you need to be able to be teachable and humble. So if you can focus on being teachable, humble, and consistent, you are in tune of what God wants to teach you. When was the first time you heard God? What was the story? If you if you know it off the top of your head. And how I actually did, don't remember. You don't remember? No, I when don't was remember. the last time? Okay. The last time it's a crazy story. So it's a story that I said yesterday. I was in Josh Retreat and I went on a um kind of like a, a fasting journey myself. And I went up to the desert by myself five days on fasting just water and I had a psychedelics with me. So I had mushrooms and I had DMT. And I had an encounter with God and I knew it was God because it was the same voice that had been speaking to me before. And we were just having a conversation regarding being ready. And he was basically telling me that I wasn't ready to achieve certain things in life. I asked him why, and he said, that's for you to figure out. And that was kind of like my last encounter. And my conclusion to that was that if God wants to entrust you with a lot of things, you have to be trustworthy. And if he can't trust you with the small things, he's not gonna trust you with the big things. And I realized that there was things in my life that he couldn't trust me in because I hadn't surrendered the small shit. Like I hadn't surrendered my habits with eating. I hadn't surrendered uh, my habits with how I perceived money and, or I hadn't surrendered my habits with pride, right? All these things that need to be out of the way in order to be used in a higher way. That was the last time I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with God that was phenomenal to remember.